The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sideline. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And it's March, which means it's time for March Madness. Uh, we have conference tournaments started yesterday. Um, they're gonna more gonna be starting up today. And then we got some of the bigger conferences going into the weekend and then next week. Um, so we're two weeks away from the big March Madness episode. We did confirm Jordan and Sammy are gonna be back. Uh, for that, so that's exciting. There's gonna be a lot of screaming. Yeah, There's gonna be a lot of emotions. Uh, Sammy was saying a lot of horrible picks. Sammy was once again saying he believes that Michigan State can do something. Um, <laughs> uh, so you know that's it's always interesting. I hope he keeps that faith from now. Yeah, until and Jordan's gonna be hyped up because Duke's starting to gain some steam as they head into the tournament. So uh, today. We're going to talk a little bit about some draft combine stuff. Um, I think there's some interesting topics that I wanted to bring up around that. Um, maybe some interesting prospects that surprised us. And then the rest of the time, we're just going to talk about some of those smaller conference uh, college teams or tournaments that have a chance to do something as we get closer to the tournament. Um, so draft combine. Did you watch any of it, Malik? Or did you do what I did and watch the highlights? I YouTube. watched some of it. It was kind of like 50-50. Yeah. Like, I, I checked in on some 40-yard dashes. uh, And then I'd, like, z- I'd tune back out. Mm-hmm. And I was watching most of, like, the receivers, running backs, and uh, quarterbacks day on Saturday. Yeah. And I tuned out, like, 15 minutes before Xavier Worthy ran the 40. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was kind of upset that I missed mm. it in yeah. the moment, but. Still, yeah. So for anybody that didn't know, Xavier Worthy broke the 40 time record. Um, he ran a four one uh nine. Four two one. Four two one, yeah. yeah. Almost four one. Um, which was previously held by John Ross. And this was kind of my big topic that I wanted to bring up. Um because Xavier Worthy ran the fastest forty at four point two one. His draft stock is going to rise quite a bit. Yeah, he's going first round. And it'll the crazy part, and people are going to be mad at this. He's going to be the back half of the first round, most likely. Yeah. Which means Bills are there, Chiefs are there. <laughs> um, have fun with that. Um, I did hear some crazy talk today on the radio as well coming in that a couple Lions fans were like, "We should pick up Xavier Worthy, so we have Xavier Worthy and Jamison Williams." What kind of offense do you think? And this Jameer is? Gibbs, what? like that'd be funny, but it would be funny, but. <laughs> And it'd be fun at times, but I yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Are uh, are y'all trying to be the Dolphins? Right. Um, or yeah. So that's like it goes into my thing of like, does the forty matter to you? Or how much do you weigh the forty time? Because on the opposite spectrum, Keon Coleman, who we thought is, you know, a bona fide stud, he ran what, four six something? Yeah. He ran like four six two or something. Yeah. And but I, I think people that watch him play know that doesn't matter. Yeah. And all his drills, he ran way faster. So he's yeah. got game speed. So how much do you take into a 40 time of like, how much, that, how much does that mean to you? Or is that just like a, a flash in the pan? Like, okay, yeah, it, it proves they're fast. It's honestly really mainly for entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's for the fans at this point. Like, yeah, you, you saw like they had a record crowd in that Indianapolis stadium for the uh, combine this year yeah. on Saturday. The fans just want to come out and see, like, how the level of athleticism these top prospects have, mm-hmm. how fast these guys are, how high they can jump. Yeah. And there are a lot of college football obsessives out here that would, <laughs> that would like to go and see these guys up close. Right. Because uh, for the most point, you're not going to see them play. Yeah. 
in real time. So mm -hmm. seeing how well they test athletically is like as close as you'll get to seeing what these guys look like in college. Yeah. And they're all in one setting. I think the other thing too, that's funny. Um, oh, that's where I got my four one from. So they also had a track star at, he's going to be a yeah. U.S. team, uh, Christian Coleman. Uh, he ran like a 4.16 or something, 40. So that was to just show you the difference between track speed and football speed. Yeah. Um, also, allegedly, Bo Jackson has the yeah, combine all that. record with like 4.18 or something. Right. There's that or, mystique. Yeah. But nobody, there's no official number. Yeah. And I believe he probably did it. And but. how often when you're running a straight line in football, are you not already just gone and you're not really running as your fastest? So to me, I, I kind of go in the same boat. Like the 40 time is fun to me though, where the 40 time actually starts to matter is with some of your big guys. When you see some of these interior linemen and stuff that are running four, five, yeah. four, six, like it's insane. It doesn't, it, it, you can't comprehend it. Um, and that's where I think some of that stuff is a little more important because they're, constantly trying to chase these faster guys down um and again if you look at the previous record holder of the 40 john ross he never really had a much of a career uh a lot of teams tried him out um the bengals held with him for a while and he did a couple things in the slot here and there but he never fully broke out um and uh, again half these guys usually are very small like xavier worthy is 180 um, is he even Xavier Worthy foot? is like 175 yeah, pounds. Yeah, like I don't even think he's 180. Right, and unless you're like again, Devonte Smith kind of changed the the game for those smaller wide receivers. But even him, to a certain degree, he's more of a complete receiver. He's not just like a burner. Yeah, and even him, to a certain degree, he was taken with such high draft capital, but there hasn't been a huge payoff per se he's really good you can't deny it but he's not calvin johnson or like right Randy you know, Moss. he's yeah. he's the second guy on his team because aj brown is just that much bigger and better um so it's it's hard to weigh all that stuff um so i just think it's interesting how much the 40 time matters uh to me sometimes it's also similar to like hand size for quarterbacks and things like that like people were raving about michael Penix's hands because he has giant I'm going to be honest, I didn't even see that. Yeah. I, I, I must have missed so, that. So, uh, apparently his metrics for, like, his arm length and his hand size and things like that, like, he's in the top, top percentile of that. And that may move him up the board. Take that with what you will. That won't do anything. <laughs> Jared Goff plays pretty yeah. good, and he has small hands. That's it. It's all about the tape and yeah. seeing what they've done. Mm -hmm. And even more, there's stuff you nobody can predict. Yeah, there have been so many bad picks in the past because people just assume somebody is a good person. Yeah, and can become a leader, mm -hmm. and it's clear that it's never going to happen. Right, like no, literally no one predicted Jamarcus Russell would be that bad. Nobody knew he was going to not give effort and be the last one, like the last person in, last person out. Nobody right. figured mm -hmm. he was going to be a complete bust, like on and off the field. Yeah, he just got picked number one. Mm -hmm. And that goes right into the other thing that I want to talk about, too, because it's becoming more and more prevalent. Caleb Williams sat out of everything. He apparently declined getting his medical exam. Um, and then Marvin Harrison said he was going to meet with people. Marvin Harrison didn't even show up. He didn't do anything. Yeah. Um, how do you like how do you feel about that? Do you think like I get it? Like they're they're so they have so much hype behind them that it feels like if they did anything, it would hurt their their draft stock. Do you believe in that? Do you think they should show us something, or I, where I, do you fall on that? I do think it's weird to show up and just do nothing. Mm -hmm. I like Caleb Williams. At least he like he was active like with NFL Network and doing interviews, and he was there like encouraging people during their drills. Right. He was like in it, even though he wasn't performing mm -hmm. he was around it and like on the sidelines marvin marvin harrison just deciding to like be there but not be there that's just that's weird to me i don't i don't exactly understand yeah why you even go to indianapolis if you know you're you're not going to show your face or do anything right and just okay my pro day come to that mm -hmm. 
I was going to say, yeah, these guys will do private workouts. They'll do a pro day um, where they're in their comfortable environment and all that. I don't know. It, to me, it just stinks. Again, it's it's another like one of those fan things. It stinks as a fan to not be able to see these top prospects uh, do what they do. Um, but I do. I get the, the logistics of it. Like if they've hired an agent and they're projected to be two of the top prospects, what do you need to show at that point? Because you're only going to hurt yourself if you make a mistake. So um, the other one that's kind of the somewhat opposite of that is J.J. McCarthy. He's one that his draft stock has is just astronomical right now. I, I don't think he's going as high as some people say he's yeah. going. But you think he's going to be the, the Will media, Levis the of media this draft? Is saying, or right in the middle. Uh, let me let me ask this because I completely like forget where did Will Levis go in the last draft? I don't remember um, where he went. I think he was like the first pick of the second round. Oh, right? um, okay, okay, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was he was in that thirties area. Mm -hmm. I think JJ might go in the first round, but. I don't. I just don't see him going top ten. There are so there are too many question marks. They are starting to talk top five. Recently, see that. I've heard a lot of teams. Well, not teams, but people saying that teams might be looking to trade into the top five to get JJ. If your organization is in a situation where you don't have much to help a quarterback, drafting JJ McCarthy is probably the worst idea you can have. Hmm. Like if you're in Minnesota. I think it makes sense having him sit behind Kirk Cousins for a couple seasons. But they don't know what they're doing with Kirk Cousins right now. That's the that's the big that problem. Too. But I was, I'm in a situation where you have a guy that you yeah. know is most likely starting for a year or two, and JJ can come in and sit and learn and watch. That makes the most. Just throwing him in. If you put him in New England, I'm I'm sorry, JJ. Like <laughs> I'm sorry for any quarterback that has to go into New England right now, but especially him. It's just I don't see it working. Yeah. Now anything is possible. But I, he's, I don't see him as a guy that can just come in and instantly get it off the bat. Mm -hmm. he, he needs to sit and learn for at least a season to me. Yeah. Some time. Um, which the quarterback is kind of the big thing this draft because it's just as good as last year, if not better. Um, and we saw, th what, three quarterbacks go in the first 10 picks or whatever last year. They thought it was going to be four kind of shaping up to be the same thing this year where it's going to be supposedly Caleb Williams, Drake May, uh, and Jaden Daniels with potentially J.J. McCarthy. Um, do you think that we could see three quarterbacks go in like the top five? Like, Do you think those three guys are top five? I think there's a good chance all three of them could go top five. I just... I don't. I don't know what teams are looking for right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know New England needs a quarterback, but they need everything. So like, yeah, like they got Christian Gonzalez last year. He hit and then he got hurt. The, when you look at the rest of their roster, they need so much. Right, a quarterback isn't fixing their situation right now, mm -hmm. and a quarterback is most likely gonna fall apart in their organization. Yeah, the Bears. Uh, we hear the rumors about them wanting to trade Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. Are they actually going to do it? I have zero idea. Like, I, I I, have no idea what teams want to do right now. Right. I just can't tell. And to be fair, we're just getting into the free agency period. Um, we just got through, like, franchise tags and things like that. Um, so it, it's kind of a growing thing. So we've already seen guys like T. Higgins get franchise tagged. Um Brian Burns just got franchise tagged. Josh Allen for the uh, Jaguars. And then, what's the other notable one? Oh, Legereus Sneed, who apparently is also open to trade. So there's some rumors the Lions might be involved in that. Um, but we'll wait and see. Notably, guys that did not get tagged, though. Um, oh, and Mike Evans got re-signed to a two-year? I think it's two-year, $52 million, $35 million guaranteed. So that also sets the market for potentially Amon Ross St. Brown, um, which will be interesting going forward. Guys that did not get tagged, which is interesting, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, uh, Austin Eckler is out there, Derrick Henry is out there. So there's a lot of like veteran running backs that are available at the time. Um, and then, is that it? 
I think those are all the notable ones that I could think of. There might be one that I'm missing, but um, yeah. Oh, and free agents, the Lions did re-sign Emmanuel Mosley to a one-year deal, which I think we all kind of wanted, just to give him another prove it year. Yeah. So there's some some interesting things that could go on in the NFL in the next couple of weeks, and then we'll be able to figure out maybe a little bit more about what teams might be looking for as far as the draft goes. And we'll get into the mock draft stuff once we get done with the tournament uh, and all that. Because the Lions literally could go almost anywhere in the draft. Um, where they're at, there's a lot of availability. Um, so it should be fun to uh, talk about when we get there. But is there anything else you wanted to go over in, from the Combine or anything like that? Um, I, I don't think Blake Corum. in particular. Blake Corum. 27 reps on the bench. Yeah, just as much as Joe Alt, which is yeah. just funny to – when you look at Blake Corman, it makes sense because mm-hmm. his muscles are just insane. Yeah. He looked great in the running back drills. Mm-hmm. So I think he'll go at least like third, fourth round. I'm not sure if he'll go second round. Yeah. He could, but I think third round most likely. Yeah, there's no there's no Jameer Gibbs or Bijan Robinson in this draft, but there's some uh, there's always quality running backs. Um I don't think anybody's gonna sneak into the first round. Um, but maybe second round, you never know what people are thinking. So it, that should be interesting. Um, okay. NCAA games. We have conference tournaments going on. And this is the exciting time because the teams that start out are all these smaller conference schools. But it gives me time to start watching some of these smaller schools because they're on ESPN3, ESPN+, Plus, uh, things like that. And it gets you an idea of who can maybe compete with some of these top teams that, you know, you don't know about, you don't hear about. Um, but I think for today, we have to go over the number one seed in the Horizon League. Your Oakland Grizzlies. The Golden Grizzlies. Trey Townsend, Oxford native, named Horizon Player of the Year, which is pretty cool. Um, how do you feel <laughs> about the Golden Grizzlies going into the Horizon League matchup? Is that tomorrow night? Yes. Okay. I and will you're be going in attendance. There. Yeah. They're playing Purdue Fort Wayne, and it's probably like one of the hardest opening <laughs> games to the tournament they could have. Yeah. I've seen them lose to much lesser teams with better teams. Mm-hmm. Like the I think the K Felder 2016 team when they were first place and they lost to a bad Youngstown State team, I, I believe, in the very yeah. first round. I have no faith. None at all. They're good enough to win this tournament. And they also have moments where they just look bad and they could also just like get blown out in this game. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what to expect. Yeah. Literally no idea. I I, I don't want to go on a great campy tirade. I don't. (laughs) I really don't. Because he is a good coach. But it, you know what? I'm done with Oakland if they lose this game. <laughs> if they lose this game okay, and they don't make the tournament again yeah, and they lose in the first round at home and Greg Campy waste five or six teams at least in the past 12, 13 years that could have possibly made the tournament, three or four that definitely should have made the tournament, I am done with Oakland basketball as long as Greg Campy is the basketball coach. Okay. I'm like I, I have no faith right now, and it'll be even worse. Hmm. And this is this is a good basketball program. Yeah, I probably sound insane. Yeah, I sound ridiculous saying this stuff. Do I? <laughs> I get it. Like I've it, seen so many disappointments that I I just can't keep doing this. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to believe in a team that's been kind of failing you. So I get that. I I have seen more talented teams do less. Yeah. Um, And and the other thing that's, again, the Horizon League, we've been seeing teams like Cleveland State. And Northern Kentucky. And Milwaukee even be really good in this conference. And, like, this year, Cleveland State's seventh seed. Purdue-Fort Wayne, like you said, they're, they're usually a good team. And they're, what, the eighth seed? So, like, it's a pretty competitive... Uh, tournament 
And that just makes it even harder to believe in your number one seed. And we've already seen in some of the, like yesterday in, uh, man, why can I not think of whatever conference uh, Eastern Kentucky's in? Eastern Kentucky is in, are they, are they in the OVC? Uh, they might be. The it might be the OVC. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Eastern Kentucky was the number one seed, and they lost to the number 10 seed, Jacksonville. So even in these conference tournaments that you think are uh, quote-unquote weaker, you can see the top team lose in the first round. So I, I get that you know there's some hesitation there. But also, do you think that there's a chance that if um, Oakland makes it out of this first round, do you think then you would feel more comfortable, or are you just going to be nervous every round? Every round. Okay. Every single. I need them to make the title game mm -hmm. to have some hope that yeah. it's possible because I haven't seen them in the title game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, it's, it's just disappointment one after another. You have all conference players. You, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, mm -hmm. if I vent my frustration some more, I'm just going to, I'm just going to start saying a bunch of, like stuff that's not logical and just a bunch of stupid stuff. Yeah. So I just hope Oakland wins. I, man, I believe in their best players. I do. It's not a lack of talent problem. Like you said, Trey Townsend is a good player. He's a high level college basketball player. Blake Lantman and uh, Jack Golke have both shot really well lately. Right. DQ Cole was a nice find, a kid out of Pontiac that they got from community college. He's played really well as that starting three. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're not very deep. Right. And if they go cold shooting threes, like they, any team can beat them. So I just, I hope they make it, but I, I just don't have faith. Yeah. I just don't. Sorry, <laughs> Oakland fans. And alumni. Yeah, that, that's that's fair, though. I, I get that. Um, all right. Let's get outside of um, your biases towards the horizon. Let's go to, we have the Northeast Conference that's playing. And this was fun for me doing some a little bit of research because I found out that in the Northeast Conference, they have the LeMoyne Dolphins, who you said are Former D two school, yeah, and so they just first, recently moved up. Or it's either their first or second year okay. in Division One. I think it might be their first. Which, for people that don't know, dolphin is like one of my favorite animals growing up. So to see, I've never seen a basketball team with the dolphin as their mascot. So to me, that's exciting. Um, I don't expect much. They're fourteen and sixteen, um, and they're playing FDU tonight. And FDU is fifteen and sixteen. I think it's like the four five matchup. I believe. And unfortunately, LeMoyne has like very little offense um, and not great defense. So they don't do anything really well, which usually as a small conference school is not a good thing. But um, in the Northeast Conference, one of the uh, top teams is Merrimack. And they... They should have made the tournament last year, but Fairleigh Dickinson got in. Yes. Yeah. So... And that kind of goes into, it shows you that, again, even though a team can dominate their conference, when you get into the conference tournament, uh, it's all up in the air. Um, because this year it's, what is, is it? Central, Central Connecticut Cent State. Central Connecticut yeah. State is the top school. Sounds like a fake school. Yeah. <laughs> it does. With Merrimack right there. But similar to the Horizon League, when you look at the individual games, these teams all play each other fairly close. And so it, it's kind of fun. Like I said, it, it's fun for me to watch because I don't know any of these teams. Hardly know any of the players. But I do know that even with Central Connecticut State being the quote-unquote top seed, Merrimack is the team that a lot of people are more so talking about again. Um, so I'm curious to see how they do. I don't Again, I haven't watched too much of them, but they have, uh, what's his name? Jordan. The Jordan Minor? No, 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 no. Jordan Minor played for Merrimack last year and now plays at Virginia. 
It's uh, Jordan Durkak. Okay. He's, he's like their best player. Yeah. He's a 6'5 guard, um, averaging 17, yeah, almost, almost 18, 18 points. Yeah, almost 18 a game, but yeah, he shoots 27% from the free throw line. Yeah. So I need to... I might need to brush up on this kid. Right. What kind of game does he have? Yeah. Average. But he only, he, can't shoot he only, sh- yeah, he only shoots 27% from three, but it looks like, again, it's hard to look from stats and we'll, we'll get more uh, information as we watch this team. He scored over 20 the last two games. Yeah. But it's, what's crazy too is like they average 10 steals a game as a team and like four blocks, which indicates that they might be a pretty good defensive team, um, which could be fun. So I'm I'm kind of curious to see um, what they can do um, necessarily. Um, I know Sacred Heart's another good team uh, in the Northeast. They actually beat um, Merrimack just recently, and so again, I'm kind of excited for the Northeast Conference. It, I don't know much about it. It's one of those weird ones that you know we've we've seen Fairleigh Dickinson kind of make it in a few tournaments here and there. Um, so I'm curious to see if they can keep it up, but again, I'm, I'm rooting for the dolphins and they're playing the dolphins. So I think there's a top two of a certain conference that we need to talk about because we've, we've texted about these two teams many times in the past few months Yeah, because their star players are guys that if they get into the tournament, Mm -hmm. will become legends. Yeah. And they could take over. And I, I think yeah. for one of the teams, people already are starting to know about him because of, you know, social media yeah. and the way that it works. But yeah. we're talking about the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah. And their top two teams, Indiana State and Drake, mm-hmm. the Drake Bulldogs and, and, and the I Indiana think, State Sycamores. Yeah. And I think some people know about Drake a little bit because of last year. Um, and they showed that they were pretty good last year. Yeah. Um, but we haven't seen Indiana State. And, you know, funny enough, people don't really know about Indiana State, but they do have a legendary uh, former player or alumni uh, that played at Indiana State. So if anybody doesn't know who Larry you Bird is. I was about to say, if you don't know the answer to that question, you shouldn't yeah. be a basketball fan because <laughs> you need to know right. Larry Bird went to Indiana State. Yeah, famously led his team quite far. Um, But, yeah, Indiana State. They don't have Larry Bird on their team, but they do have one Robbie Avila. They have a guy that's one step off. Yes. A legend in the making. Yeah. He wears goggles. He's 6'9". He's not very athletic. Right. But does he know how to play the game? He has. Does he know how to play the game of basketball? Great footwork. Robbie Avila, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, He's averaging almost 18 points a game. Seven rebounds, four assists. 55% 55% from the field, 39, almost 40% from three, 82% from the lot. He's just a baller. Yeah. You know, like he can shoot. He can. Yeah. Okay. I, I got to do this so that Chris is on board and I need to make Chris listen to this. But if Chris is so like, if we're the Loyola Chicago podcast and we loved Loyola Chicago when they made their run, Robbie Avila is very similar, probably better, but he's very similar to Cameron Crutwig. He he kind of is, but he, he goes to a whole other level. Right. And, and that's Rob, what I mean. Robbie Avila is literally like a college version of, of Nikola Jokic. Yes. He yeah. does everything very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and the only reason I, I compare him to Crutwig is because they both have really good footwork, not super athletic. They also drop some dimes here and there, and they just kind of do a little bit of everything. But again, Avila is just a step above that. Yeah. Um, and he's... If nobody's seen him play, just go and watch him play. It, it's a it's it's a joy to watch. He looks like what he reminds me of is just picture when you go to the gym and you're playing that one old guy. I always refer to him as my dad. Yeah, and he just gives you a quick little like shoulder fake into just like a little up and under. Everything he does works, right? And it pisses you off. Yes, and you don't understand. <laughs> because he it. knows he he knows you, what he's doing. You don't get it until you're older. Exactly. Um, that's kind of what Robbie Avila's play style is. But they're like they're a good offensive team overall. It's not just Robbie Avila. Yeah. They have two other guys that are averaging 16 points a game. They shoot almost 40% from 3 as a team. Yeah. 50% from the field as a team. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So they can keep up with almost anybody. Now, 
the one disappointing thing, I guess, is they've had a couple bad losses here yeah, and there. In the past, like, two weeks. Yeah, they lost to uh, Southern Illinois was one in Illinois State. So as long as they're not playing an Illinois team, maybe they'll be all right. Yeah. Both of those teams are in the middle of the pack of the Missouri Valley, so it's not like the worst. Right. But it doesn't help. Yeah. Especially when, if you don't win the Missouri Valley Conference, you still want to get one of those, yep. like, eight, nine seeds, possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they split uh, their games with Drake. They, I think they beat Bradley both of their times, which is also, Bradley's like the third seed or something in their uh, in that conference. Um, They notably went toe-to-toe with Michigan State, gave Michigan State a little bit of a scare um, for a bit, and then Michigan State finally pulled away. But I think Indiana State is a team that could do something given the right matchup. And then on the other side, with Drake, I, I we had to have talked about Tucker last year. I think we we brought him up, but yeah. he's he's gone to an even higher level. Now, he is a coach's son, yeah. so he has the green light, mm-hmm. but... Tucker DeVries was like a borderline four-star recruit coming out of high school. Yeah. He could have gone to bigger schools, but he chose to come home and play for his dad, to stay home and play for his dad. Mm -hmm. And listen, 21 a game, 35% from three, which could be better, but he shoots a high volume. Right. 80% from the line, which shows you he can shoot. Mm -hmm. And almost 45% from the field. Yeah. Like he shoots a high volume, but he knows how to score. Right. And he gets buckets. Yeah, and he's had some crazy go off games. Yeah, he had twenty three against Bradley in their last game last Sunday. Yeah. In the first half. And then they had a scary game with uh UIC that went into triple overtime. He scored thirty nine points on five eleven three point shooting, I think, but he was very efficient overall. And he also had like um let me look it up. He had thirteen rebounds. So like he had a huge game, um, and so he's capable of that at any time. And again, Drake just, they score really well. They're an offensive-oriented team, and they can run it up with almost anybody. So a couple teams to watch out for. So that that conference tournament will also be pretty fun. Does that that conference tournament start tonight? Uh, um, I, don't think, I don't think it starts tonight. It might be tomorrow. Um, anyway. But there are teams that are scary also in that um, conference. Like I said, Bradley's also right there. They're a pretty good team. They've knocked off some some people yeah. here and there. I watched them for the first time last Sunday when they played Drake, and they've got some really good guys. Yeah. yeah. So so they have some potential there. And then more notable teams that like we've seen in the past of Belmont and Northern Iowa, uh, they're also pretty good too. So it's just it's something to watch out for. Yeah. And it's interesting, but I would love for Indiana State or Drake to make it. It's really tough for both of them to make it, um, but there is a chance, um, depending on what happens elsewhere. But it would be really cool if they both made it. But hopefully, we get one of them so that we can talk about them for the uh, the big tournament episode. Yeah, I uh, I want to bounce over to the Summit League really quick. Okay, I want to bring up a player in particular, but. The top three in the Summit League are South Dakota State, North Dakota, and Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And former D2 team, St. Thomas. Yeah. Minnesota team, their fourth. Pretty solid squad. Mm -hmm. But South Dakota State, number one, they're they're, uh, 19 and 12, 12 and 4 in conference. And they have one of the best players in the country that a lot of people don't know about. He could be a a second draft steal, I mean, second round steal in the NBA draft potentially. Mm Mm-hmm. Kid named Zeke Mayo. Have you heard of him? No, I have not. Um, Six four guard. But all I know is like typically with South Dakota is they shoot the lights out, and that's what they've been known for for years. So anytime we see them in the tournament, they're they're a team that I always say to watch out for. So yeah. I can only imagine he's got to be an offensive minded player. Yeah, he uh, averages almost twenty a game, nineteen point three, six rebounds, almost four assists. Uh, thirty-seven percent from three, forty-six percent from the field, and he's just a bucket getter. Mm-hmm. He scored over twenty four times in the last five games. Last game he had nineteen. Like he, he just he finishes games for them. Okay, and he knows how to score from each level of the court, mm. and he's really talented. He's a guy. If 
South Dakota State will most likely make the tournament because I think they're by far the best team, yeah. and they got the most talent. But if Zeke Mayo gets into the tournament, he's a guy that uh, one of the seeds that plays against South Dakota State will be on upset watch because mm-hmm. Zeke Mayo can go off and go for like potentially 30 against a team. Yeah. He's that good. I think the only other team that I even paid attention to in the summit because Oral Roberts losing Max Ace Miss well, they, they like, fell off. <laughs> like ruined their team. Yeah. They're now the bottom. I, and an interesting one, I think, is Kansas City. Like they've they've hung in some games. Um they've the problem is they've looked <laughs> they've looked really bad at times, but they've also looked pretty good at times. They did beat South Dakota State a couple weeks ago, and I think that's where I first learned of them is I think I was watching ESPN or something talking about some surprise teams. Hmm. So that could be one within that conference tournament that maybe could do something. Um, But nothing from Kansas city really jumps off the page. Like they don't have one crazy score. Um, They're pretty balanced, but they also don't, they don't go crazy necessarily, but they just beat you with good basketball sometimes. So one to kind of watch out for in that, that tournament their tournament kicks off on friday um so something to watch out for there is there a team you want to bring up there's one more i want to bring up go for it i'm i'm just kind of recapping over some of the tournaments that are coming up i'm trying to look okay so we're jumping to the southland okay mostly teams in the texas area the southwest area of the country top three or four in this conference you got mcneese state yeah mcneese you got texas a&m corpus christi Mm-hmm. You got Nichols State and you got Lamar. Each team has a winning record, so this isn't a bad conference, right? But they're usually known as like one of the lower tier conferences in mid major basketball. Mm-hmm. But at the top, you've got McNeese State. Yeah, they're and they're good. Twenty seven and three overall, mm-hmm. sixteen and one in conference. And guess who their coach is? Hmm. I can't uh, remember actually. Former LSU coach, guy that got caught up in like the wire t- the wiretap scandals. Oh, and um, most people assumed he was giving out bags at LSU because he was getting five star prospects all over the place. Yeah, Will Wade. Yes, that's that's who it was. Yeah. he got fired from LSU because of a lot of controversy. Yeah, and those fans miss him a ton because <laughs> they were more competitive with him. Right, but yeah, he jumped to the mid major. And McNeese State is in Louisiana mm-hmm. and immediately just, like, got them over the top yeah. as a program. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they have any quad one wins, but they've dominated all the mid-major competition and they've dominated their conference in particular. I'm trying to think. I just watched a bracketology thing the other day, and I'm trying to remember if I saw that they had any quad one wins. But, yeah, McNeese, I'm assuming when tournament time comes around, they're going to be a – Big favorite um, for upset. Oh yeah, it's it's going to be I. It's going to be a team that I I don't even know if I'm going to pick them because yeah. they're going to be like the trendy upset team mm-hmm. if they make the tournament. Yeah, they beat. Uh, <laughs> notably, I remember early on in the season they did beat Michigan, which at the time was a decent win. Um, they beat Louisiana, which is a pretty good win. Um, but I don't see any quad one wins. Um. They lost to Louisiana Tech. So those are the like notable teams that I can see. But yeah, they're they're gonna be a, a favorite. And I'm kind of in the same boat. Like they're almost too much of a favorite where I'm nervous that they might get overhyped going into their tournament. Um but yeah, I mean they're they're twenty seven and three, so it it's hard to discount what they've done this season at all. Um okay. I'm looking at trying to trying to look at some of the tournaments that are starting today. We have the OVC, which I haven't really done any research on. I know that Little Rock and Moorhead State, that's the other one that's in that conference. I haven't done much research on them yet. Um and then we have the Big South is starting tonight, which do they have No yeah, but the Big South doesn't have anybody crazy this year. In the past, we've seen like Gardner Webb be pretty good or Winthrop. Yeah. Um, but this year, oh, I guess UNC Asheville kind of fell off. I think they were having a pretty good season. If 
I remember correctly, and then they had a couple losses late in the season. Yeah, the best team in the conference is High Point right now. Yeah. And you want to see Asheville a second. Right. So I don't know. I'm trying to remember, but I felt like UNC Asheville at one point was running away with that division. So not sure. Maybe I'll have to do more research on that one. Um, but high point might be pretty good, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Is that the only tournaments that are kicking off tonight? The rest are going to be tomorrow and Friday and then going into the weekend, of course. So we'll do some more research. So let's talk about some of the the big the big name teams, because there's actually some big some big games that happened. Um, Purdue beat Illinois last night, which was a pretty big deal, um, because if Illinois would have won, they would have had a chance to potentially move up their seating for the tournament. And then um, Florida knocking off Alabama, I thought was a pretty good win. They won by 18. Yeah, and Alabama had looked pretty good going into that game. Um, so to lose that badly to Florida, I know it's at it was at Florida, um, but that's a big win for Florida, and that puts them in the conversation um, to a better seed going into the tournament, and they're going to be potentially kind of scary in the SEC tournament now. Um, we saw South Florida beat Tulane, which was a good win for them. I think they they wrapped up the American regular season title. I'm pretty yeah. sure. The unfortunate thing for them is they're probably still going to need to win their tournament. They're in the same boat as like Indiana State and Drake, where even if as good of a season as they had, if they don't win their tournament, it's going to be really hard for them to get in because the other likely team that gets in is going to be either Charlotte or FAU, I would think, unless you know somebody makes a magical run. But those are like the other two teams behind them. And they might not have enough of a resume to get in otherwise, which would be disappointing. Um, Auburn had a huge win over Missouri. Uh, They just destroyed Missouri. Uh, Kansas beat Kansas State. No big deal. Dayton beat St. Louis. And then, unfortunately for your Aztecs, they lost to UNLV. And UNLV has kind of been the team that's knocked somebody off each time they get any momentum um, in the Mountain West, it feels like. So Mountain West, I think, is going to be a, a fun, fun tournament. They got Utah State. Nevada is now up there. UNLV. Boise State is a surging team. San Diego State is all the way down in the middle of the pack. Uh, they have New Mexico, who was a hot name at one point. And then they have Colorado State, who has Isaiah Stevens. So, like, the Mountain West could be quite exciting, actually, for once. Um but I don't know. We'll, we'll again. I don't want to get too caught in the weeds of uh, tournaments that haven't really started yet. But it's interesting. And then uh, tonight, there's some big matchups. Uh, we have Houston taking on UCF, which again we've seen UCF be another one of those teams that's upset people uh, late in the season. A big matchup for my uh, Tennessee Volunteers. Taking on South Carolina, that team that Malik you talked about a Did couple weeks ago. Did you say my ago. Tennessee Valentine? I'm starting to take. I just. Them. I just <laughs> I'm starting to pick them. Uh, they're. I'm are you, scared. Are you fully on the Dalton Connect train? I think I am, and it stinks because he's, he's the real. It makes me nervous. He's the realest of the real deal. It just makes me nervous. I guess they haven't had this type of player. I think this is what they've needed to. Yeah. At least make a run to like an elite eight. Yeah. But ever since you know the whole Iowa debacle when I was. So on Iowa, and they lost in the first round. That's Iowa, though. They just looked really bad. <laughs> that, that's different. Yeah, but it was a you know Keegan Murray-led team, defense. and uh, it was just disappointing. So uh, that just makes me nervous when I get too on to a team early. Um, an interesting matchup, too, for me is UConn and Marquette. Uh, Tyler Kolick is not playing in this game because of his injury, um, and we don't even know if he's going to be able to play in their conference tournament. Do you think Marquette is that good? Because to me, everybody keeps talking about Marquette, and I just don't see it. I think Marquette is good. I don't think they have that extra thing to take them on a run. Yeah. Now, so there are times where certain teams just hit a hot streak, and right. Marquette has the type of like offense and shooting ability to hit that hot streak. Yeah. And healthy Tyler Kolick is good enough at point guard to get them there, but 
I I just don't like I I like I like Cam Jones a lot. To me, I feel like he Cam can, Jones he can get hot and go for like twenty five to thirty. I was gonna say I feel like he's gonna have to do that. Yeah. To do to get them anywhere. You're right. He and, he has to have big games. For and the wild thing is, going. like they're gonna be a two or three seed in the tournament. And you know, to give a little hint, I might have them lose in the first round, depending on who they're playing. Listen, and I could be totally wrong, but yeah. I just they're a well balanced team that doesn't like to depend on like one guy, but they mm-hmm. usually have to because their their talent level is good, but not like next level. Right. Yeah. Like Tyler Kolick and Cam Jones are both outstanding college players. I don't think anybody has has any projections of them playing in the league. Mm-hmm. They have very few players that might play in the NBA. Right. Um, and then the other one, BYU, Iowa State. Two teams that I'm kind of also a little unsure on. I usually like the way that Iowa State plays, um, but they are a little prone to losing at times in big games. Um, and then BYU is kind of the same way where like they've had some good wins and they've had some pretty big losses. Um, they did just beat TCU, which was a pretty big win. So they're kind of on the upswing. They beat Kansas, but they lost to Kansas state the week before that they beat Baylor the week before that, but they lost to Oklahoma state. Like BYU doesn't make any sense to me. That Kansas win alone might get them in the tournament. Yeah. They, well, ha- they have enough good enough wins and then they went and beat Kansas. I'm pretty sure they're, they're in the tournament at this point. Yeah. They're, they're the number 20 team in the country and I mean, realistically, they just have to win their first round matchup in the Big 12, I think, because what do we got? Let's see. Houston, Iowa State, two, Baylor, three, Texas Tech, four, Kansas, five, BYU, six. Eh, I I guess there's a way they could lose and get out because TCU's got a decent resume. Texas and Oklahoma have okay resumes. Yeah, I I guess there's there's some chances. I think there's a chance Texas gets left out. I, I think I, so yeah, too. Te- Texas does not have a good resume. Yeah, to me, I just think the Big Twelve is kind of it's tough. So that back end, I think there are ways that somebody could sneak in. There are going to be a few NIT teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then Kentucky plays Vanderbilt. No big deal. Utah State plays San Jose State. Those teams just need to get it done. Um, Northwestern and Michigan State tonight. This was the big one we were kind of talking about last week even. It's senior night. Now it's time for me to ask me where your faith is, Joey. I have little faith in Oakland. What's your faith with Michigan State basketball? I mean, I have little faith too, but I got to feel like on a senior night at home, you're coming off two back-to-back home losses that are bad. They're not in a half-point favorites. Northwestern is the better team. Yes. But I think the scenario just fits better for for Michigan State. I'm still nervous about the game. Don't, don't get me wrong. Because they could come in a little too amped up, start missing shots, Northwestern go on a little run. And, you know, Michigan State's not like, they're not the best team that's equipped to make comebacks or big comebacks per se. So, I don't know. Tyson Walker needs to have one of those games. He does. And he's need he's going to need to step up for the entire Big 10 tournament, um hopefully the NCAA tournament. He honestly has he hasn't been great. No. In like the past week or week or two. Yeah, he's been much lower than his normal standards. Yeah. Um so to speak. So I don't know where my confidence lies because I, again, I just don't know what this team can do differently that's going to change my mind. Somebody's going to have to step up. Is it going to be Jay Nakins again? I don't know. Is it going to be A.J. Hoggard again? I don't know. But I think it's going to need to be one of those guys for sure. Tyson Walker needs to get back to what he's been doing. Malik Hall's actually had a pretty surprisingly good season. And then... I don't know. I, I just don't know what they're going to do about their big man situation. And that could be matchup depending when we get into the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament. If the other team has, you know, some big man that could take advantage, I might be a little nervous about who they're playing. If if the other team is like Indiana State, 
I know they beat Indiana State already, but having to play another Indiana State and Robbie Avila being able to take advantage plus the shooting that they have, like that kind of team would scare me going into the tournament if I was Michigan State. Um, But I don't know. I'm not sure. If they lose this game, though, I'll be very terrified because like we said last week, I believe, then they only have one more game. They got Indiana. And if they lose to Indiana and then lose their first round matchup in the Big Ten tournament, we might see Michigan State not in the tournament. The Which big dance might be better for the program. Maybe, it may be. Because you, right. it would wake some people up. Yeah, and people are already starting to wake up. I feel like we've been. You know, I don't like to toot my own horn too often, but I feel like we've been ahead of the game for once, and people are just now catching up. And sometimes that makes me feel a little bit good inside. But it's unfortunate because it's at the the cost of Michigan State being a good team. And even if they make it into the tournament, they're going to be that 8, 9, 10 seed range. Even if they go on a run and make it all the way to like the Big Ten championship, which I think the team is technically capable of doing. I don't know how high their their seed could rise, but they're going to be in a scary matchup. They're going to have a tough matchup no matter where it goes. And I don't know. It's a It's a wait and see kind of thing. And it's... Unfortunately, it's like a game-by-game game analysis. So, we'll see. Um, another interesting matchup, too, Villanova and Seton Hall. Two teams that are on the bubble as well, similar to Michigan State, where they're trying to make it in to the big dance. And both of them have decent resumes, but they're going to need to make some runs in their conference tournament to have a chance to make it in. Um, but both are right there and can't really afford to lose some of their final games. Like, Seton Hall has Villanova and then DePaul. So, they need to win those games. Villanova plays Seton Hall and then Creighton, so they could really improve themselves and make it in, most likely. So, some interesting ones there. Um, Looking at the slate, I think most of the other these other games are somewhat not mattering for the most part as much as I can see. Yeah. I guess Loyal Chicago playing Davidson is actually kind of a big game for them to finish out their season. Uh, Loyola Chicago does have a chance of uh, getting back to the tournament, which would be nice. The A-10 is another interesting conference because they have Richmond and Loyal Chicago at the top but Dayton is that top 25 team. So that's a, a a conference that could get potentially two teams in, depending on what happens. Um, so if Richmond or Loyola Chicago win their tournament, Dayton still might have a resume to get in. And then who knows? And then that unfortunately takes away from Drake or Indiana State. So that's where all that stuff gets really interesting. Um, is there any teams that you want to talk about before? We're, we're basically done, but we got to, two or three minutes. If there's a, a team or a matchup or maybe a conference tournament that you're you're looking forward to this weekend, besides though, maybe the horizon. Even though they're playing Vanderbilt tonight, <laughs> I think Kentucky is a team going into the tournament that team should be afraid of. Okay. Because Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard are playing at such a high level right now. Mm-hmm. When they're rolling, like the, the rest of the team picks up their level of play too. Yep. And... They they've been they've scored over a hundred I think five times this season, mm-hmm. and that's more than like any Power Five team. Yeah, that shows how high level their offense can be. So yeah, Kentucky is a team that people should be afraid of. Yeah. Um, I think the Mountain West might actually only get like four teams in, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because uh, those types of conferences, you have to be like ranked top 20 at least right to get multiple teams in Mm -hmm. and i think utah state is their only ranked team at the moment yeah yeah i I think they are yeah they've well san diego state is ranked they just lost to unlv so the unlv is now up to third in the conference and they're not even ranked 
Yeah. So yeah, I, I I have no idea how the Mountain West is going to shake out. Yeah, that's why I said that conference could be a really yeah. fun tournament. Some teams to watch. are going to be very disappointed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think New Mexico might be out. Yeah, I point. think so too. They were a team that we talked about, you know, kind of in the middle of the season. Um, but they've had some pretty tough losses. Yeah. Them and Colorado State were both ranked at one point. Yeah. And now they're both like nine and seven, nine and eight in conference. Mm-hmm. And I think. Colorado State has a better resume to potentially make it if they make a run in their tournament. Um, so, yeah, I could see two, maybe three teams out of that conference making it, depending on, you know, what else happens. But it's definitely going to be a lot tougher, I think, the way some of them finished their tournament. So, I don't know. Um, oh, there is a big matchup this weekend of Boise State and San Diego State. That's a pretty big one before their tournament as well. So, yeah, a lot of little tournaments going on. Um, the other thing I would say, too, just because it's interesting, the Sun Belt has Appalachian State. That kicks off this weekend. Appalachian State looks like they're going to make the tournament, and they are they could be a pretty good team, surprisingly. I know we don't talk about Appalachian State too often in basketball, but uh, they've had a really good season, so might be something to watch for. Although I guess they do have James Madison, who's also having another still good season. Yeah. Even though at one point we thought they were gonna run away with their season, but they're still around. So Sun Belt could be a fun conference tournament to watch this weekend as well. Yeah. I think that's about it. You got anything else that you can think of? Oakland better win. <laughs> okay. Hey, Michigan State I, better I, win. Listen, I, I'm I'm on my last legs, Greg Campy. <laughs> with the with what, how good this program is, and how they can never get over the hump. Mm-hmm. It's it's it feels like being like an Atlanta Hawks fan or something. <laughs> Jeez. Just stuck in a play. Yeah, we we can make the playoffs, but nothing is ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's frustrating. Yeah, just make the tournament. It's been too long. Yeah, shot, I took a shot at Atlanta Hawks fans. <laughs> hey, that's fair. It's, it's true. It is what it is. Yeah. Um. Alrighty. So we'll discuss some of these uh, conference tournament winners next week, and then of course we'll get into you know the big ones where we talk about the Big Ten tournament, um, all the Power Five things like that, and we get ready for the big dance. Two weeks away. Pretty crazy. I'm excited. I, I love this time of the year uh, where it's just basketball nonstop for multiple weekends straight. But that first weekend, nothing ever, nothing I can ever touch that first weekend of just back to 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 back basketball. All right. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next week.